Hello animators, my name is Anamine and welcome back to the Dust Storm tutorial and this is part two. So in the previous tutorial, part one, we showed how to make the Dust Storm and in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you camera positions, improved lighting, how to render out your animation and also how to make sure that you only show the Dust Storm and not the environment of your 3D viewport in Blender. So let's get into it. So I am currently using uh, an existing template that exists right now. Uh, I was able to do this during my free time. So basically everything's pretty much the same. Uh, however, this was one that I actually used in my final major project movie. So yeah, it's a bit of a behind the scenes action here. So uh, today I'm gonna be showing you how you can basically improve your scene and make sure that when you render out your animation that you get the right dust storm effect because how dust works or a dust storm works is that it constantly travels in one direction for example let's say it was going from maybe here for example to here you want to make sure that it travels in that direction constantly so let's say i was standing here for example looking that way i want to make sure that the dust storm is traveling forward towards me and not make an animation where it's traveling left or right because then that's unrealistic so let's say it was traveling left or right for example you want to make when depending on the viewport or the scene that's taking place in your movie or your animation whatever you're making will decipher the look of the actual positioning of the animation so let's go straight into it so first of all what you'll need to do is you want to make sure that you have your uh, setup um, basically transparent as shown here make sure it's on rendered for you as well that's quite important so what you want to do is you want to go to this section here which is rendered properties and then what you want to do is scroll down to the uh, very bottom actually going to drag this up so of course you can't see this uh, then what you want to do is select the drop down of film and then you want to select transparent and then basically what I'll, what that will mean is that when you render it out it will only show the actual object within the actual background so then next what you want to do is you want to select the one below it which is output properties Choose the location you want to render it, of course, so that's up to you and your preferences. Recommend picking its own separate file so you have one section where you have one direction where it's the dust storm traveling left to right, so maybe call it dust storm left to right, for example, and then maybe have another render video uh, of single PNG images where the dust storm is um, traveling towards you, so you may call it dust storm. Uh, facing towards you for example that's depending on your preferences so you want to make sure as well as that when you have your file format you want to make sure that you select png which is uh, on the far left side here so actually I probably should show you so you want to make sure that as you select it file format and you want to select png which is of course pretty self-explanatory um, also as well um, yeah I think that's pretty much it so now what we're going to do is we are now going to be showing you uh, basically all the features that are required for the actual animation. So we're gonna go back to solid view and now what we're gonna be doing is showing you all the lightings that you need to do for you to produce a really good quality uh, shot, uh, not deleting. So then you can produce a really good quality shot like this. So when it comes out as a final product, because when you render it, that final product will come up like this and you wanna make sure that this is right. And when you import it, which is something we'll be doing later on, so what you want to do is make sure that you have your cameras selected or in this case, we're gonna be starting off with the light. So we have one position of our light here and it is at these coordinates on the top left. So minus 49.6654 and that is for the X axis location for, and this is for the first lighting. And for the uh, Y axis, it is minus 0.31 at uh, 30162 i'll repeat that again minus 0 0.30162 and that is for the y-axis for the z-axis you want to do 12.0515 and then that will be the position of your lighting for that object 
And also you want to make sure that when you select the light, that you want to make sure that your value is set to 50,000. I'll explain to you why in a sec, because of course, the distance of it from the camera to the actual lighting affects the actual look of the, of the actual dust storm. So then it can be viewed from the front and also at the back as well. Now what you want to do is have another light source as well. And these are the, this is the location you want to have the light source at. So you want to make sure, excuse me, it's at three for the X axis at 3.9879 meters. And then for the Y axis, 8.3838. Uh, this just for my tutorial, but you're more welcome to do just 3, 8 or 12. And for the Z, Z axis, it's 12.051. Once you have the, that light done, then the next, the lighting that you want to create for this one is the exact same, 50,000. And then you'll be able to see what it looks like through here. And that all looked like so. So as I play the animation, you'll see, of course, it's going to produce the outcome that we want. So next, what you want to do as well is make sure that your camera is positioned correctly as well. The square is, of course, going to stay in the exact same position. But of course, if you're more than welcome to increase the size of it and the scale by f to 45 for the X, Y and Z axis. So you know about that. So we're going to have one camera and we're going to be starting off by placing the location of this camera your first camera at minus 21.482. Now this will act as the left to right sequence of your animation. So we're gonna change this actually to the uh, timeline so we have so we can show you exactly what it is that's happening. So it's gonna basically be traveling left to right. So of course it's gonna go from left to right. So of course viewing it right now of course it's laggy because of course i'm viewing it from a viewport obviously but when it's rendered it'll produce the quality and then also the animation that we want so it's going from left to right and you want to make sure that when you render this out it's rendered and named as left to right you want to make sure about that and the reason why you only need to do this once is because if you are planning to make it a direction where it's going the other way so it's go from right to left for example you do not need to add another camera on the opposite side of where this camera currently is uh, i should probably send it back to material preview here we go material preview or solid preview that's better so you don't need a camera on this side because what you always just need to do simply is basically have the uh, sequence into image sequence into an image sequence when you imported it so i've got my words mixed up for a sec <laughs> Uh, and then you want to basically make sure that you basically flip it around the other way around on the actual video and then basically reverse the animation. So that basically saves you a lot of time and effort when rendering out your animation instead of having to render it, wait for a while and then you just drag it in. It's up to you how you want to do it, but this is a very cost effective way of saving you time. Right, now we're going to be doing the animation where the dust storm travels towards you. So. We're going to have our second camera here, which is going to be along this axis, along the green part. Uh, it is the Y, sorry. Uh, yeah, GY. Yeah, that was correct. You want to make sure that it's the virtually basically the exact same as the X axis. So it's going to be at minus 21.482. And then as I now view it through this camera view, uh, and let me show you what it looks like through here, you'll see that the direction of the dust storm, you can see how it's traveling towards me and then as i reverse it backwards it's going as if it's going over your head and that is very important so referring back to my previous point left to right if you're doing an animation something like that in this kind of scenario you would not need to flip it around the actual screen you just need to basically reverse the animation depending on the direction of the actual video or scene that is basically taking place of your dust storm so if it's in a sandstorm and you want to make sure that your actual direction is correct. Direction is really important because you want to make sure that your animation or your scene is realistic. If you have a bird's eye view shot in your final major project movie, then you want to make sure that your camera is also above the actual animation. So as we now play it and show it within rendered view, you'll be able to see that the dust storm travels in the direction as if it is above them. And also you want to make sure and understand that 
the actual look of the dust storm will actually decipher its size because of course the further up you go when it comes to actually moving a camera away from the clouds the smaller the size of the clouds get so it's important you make sure you do this as well but this is up to you so i let this be an extra thing for all of you as well so you want to make sure that this camera is positioned at minus 21.482 on the x-axis and for the z-axis now this is important we want to put it at 77.152 and you want also make sure that your camera is set for the z-axis minus 90 so that can face downwards and then when you render it it will be a downward shot or a bird's eye view shot it's what it's called in cinematography let's get straight into premiere pro now so we have premiere pro up and ready so all we need to do is just right click it of on the section of the import media to start import and you want to select your first image of your rendered dust storm animation i'm going to select that and then make sure you select image sequence now that is very important because then you'll render out all the images or import them as one video so as it's now imported you'll start to see that it's now been produced drag it along to here and as we play the animation voila pretty cool isn't it so i'm going to now show you how to reverse this so if you're having a scenario where you want it to go from right to left i can show you simply how to do that so i'm going to copy this and show you how to do that right click then you want to do speed and duration and then what you want to do is make sure you select reverse speed and I'll repeat that reverse speed as I select that press OK and let the magic happen. That is for left and right and here it is on the opposite direction. Pretty cool isn't it? So yeah. That is how you import in a dust storm animation as an image sequence in Premiere Pro. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial on how to create a dust storm in Blender. This is part two. If you have not seen part one, recommend you check down below in the description so you can see what part one is about. It's about making the dust storm. Vector, do you think this was a good tutorial? I thought it would thought it was a good one as well thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this video don't forget to leave a like also consider subscribing to my animation channel it does show you support i do appreciate it and i'll see you in the next video stay awesome animators